when I introduce the term representation to my film students each year, they tell me confidently that it refers to how a person, group of people, topic or issue is portrayed, but then struggle when I ask them for how real or true that portrayal is. Imagine this. I plan to make a documentary about the school I work at. I choose a fly on the wall approach with cameras in every classroom, corridor, communal area. And they all film continuously, all day, every day for the full week. What is captured is true. True, boring and tedious. Thousands of hours worth of footage. But then comes the magic. Editing time. And now the representation of this school falls in my hands. Do I make an hour long episode with clips of students being warmly greeted as they enter the building? Or if they're a student and a teacher speaking to a student, giving them in an upset moment a pep talk that fills them with their self esteem and the self belief to carry on? Or do I choose to film two girls who are hiding behind the science block while their teachers think they've nipped out of the toilet? A group of year 10 barging past a year 7 in a corridor, or a student talking back to a teacher after being asked to step outside the classroom for saying something they shouldn't have, or else two girls talking about how much they hate the school. All footage is real, nothing is scripted, pre planned, or orchestrated. And yet, I, as the editor, have the power to determine how the school is represented. And it is this which leads me to discussing high gender or more specifically, its representation is a social construct. And for men, I feel that this is a harmful one. I'm not saying it's difficult being a woman, but I feel encouraged by a movement of change, a time of democracy, for a time for demanding equality, breaking glass ceilings, calling out injustices, and making the world a better place for a generation of young women who come after us. But for men, it is different. Patriarchy has been the foundation of our society as long as we've known it, and with it created the social construct of masculinity. These societal expectations were built on maintaining the power structures that exist, the government, the church, and business leaders. This representation was built to serve the structures it promoted and protected. Men should be successful, powerful, and dominant. So let me talk you through an historical example of when these representations are challenged. 1980s England, Margaret Thatcher, the Falklands War, economic crisis, and mass deindustrialization of traditional English industries, such as coal mining, shipbuilding, and steel manufacturing. It would not be uncommon at this time to have whole towns whose livelihoods depended on these industries. Generations of young men who leave school to work in the same factory their father did and their father before them. Their futures were certain. They would work, get a house, and provide for their family. But then overnight, the majority of the time could lose their jobs and lack the skills, qualifications, or opportunities for alternatives. Anger became the resounding feeling. BAFTA award-winning director Shane Meadows made this England which reflected the disenfranchised and disillusioned youth of which who were at the mercy of this huge change, and the warning that it resulted in anger and hatred, with a steep rise in popularity for the National Front and associated racially aggravated attacks. In the climax of the film, one of the characters' combo attacks a person of colour. Instantly, full of remorse, he cries over the, his unconscious body until trying to calm himself and get him out of this moment by shouting out, real men don't cry. I can think of few scenes which have been so haunting and speak so clearly of the dangers of masculinity and when men feel they can't conform to them. You could argue that this is only one example affecting working class communities in the north of England and that things have changed a lot since then. But didn't we see the same threat to our economy to our country's expected future successes, and then experience fear and a support of UKIP in 2019 in the lead up to the Brexit vote. And with this, a rise in blame and persecution towards immigrants and refugees, 
as people wanted to blame someone in this moment of loss of control. And what about now? I see changing represent representations of masculinity in television and film. The narrative is changing, but is it changing quickly enough? Grayson Perry's book, The Descent of Men, explores why the representation of men who have still lags behind other subgroups of society, and argues that it's because men have benefited from the existing patriarch patriarchal system. So are either blind to the privilege they have been and um, they have, or are, have no desire to change a system which has benefited them. I do not, of course, apply this to all men, but it's what Perry describes as being the default man, the straight white middle class man which has dominated the majority of powerful positions within history. Those who are brought up with the greatest sense of confidence, entitlement, and self-belief in their own ability. The default man underpins all business um, successes which are dominant within society and is embedded so deeply that it's become less noticeable. You can have competition-based targets and are supported by a testosterone-fueled workplace. Meanwhile, empathy and teamwork are commonly looked over, looked over as softer feminine attributes. A woman who is self-assured and ambitious can be considered hostile, while a man who struggles or is upset is deemed feminine in their emotional weakness. With men still three times more likely to commit suicide than women, there is an important issue here. Subliminally or not, there is still a view that men should be emotionally robust and not display weakness, that men shouldn't cry, that they should man up. And there are still examples of huge popularity of followings of men who exude traits of toxic masculinity that are deeply concerning to the future of our society. And so we still have a long way to go. We as parents, educators, friends, colleagues and employers must do everything in our power to break this cycle and help once and for all, change the representation of masculinity. It no longer serves a purpose. The ideologies behind this construction are harmful and outdated. I come here not as a man-hater at all. I have two sons, and I want them to grow up happy, confident, and equipped to find happiness in their future endeavors, to be skilled in meaningful relationships, and have empathy and understanding to value equality and inclusion. We all have the power to edit this representation, and it starts now. Thank you.